All right, so we have one more portfolio to go. Um, let me make sure I do this right. So this is uh, this is Luca. So it, his uh, I man, I haven't even read these to make sure that they're not saying something horrible. <laughs> but uh, there's nothing horrible in here, I don't think. Uh, I noticed how most of your tips to the portfolios owners are more oriented to the need to have some kind of uh, continuity throughout the works that shows. Wait, the works they show and some lack of presentation or breakdowns of artworks. But what about the quality? Need to at least try to apply for a company as a junior, obviously. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, let's get this going here. D-Chan, what's going on? How you doing? Wait, you got two more weeks off? Dude, that's amazing. All right. So... Um, so right off the bat, initial reactions are um, not textured scenes in your portfolio is kind of iffy, right? Quality wise though, I mean, maybe if you have pro, like you'd have a blog where you have a blog on the outside and where you're showing like work in progress. This could be, you know, modeling practice. It says concept here, right? That's, um, yeah, this is cool. The buildings in the distance get a little blocky. So when when you're talking about uh, wanting to, to know about quality, one of the biggest things I think when people are starting to do 3D or when they're building 3D scenes is getting away from the look of geometry. And it's, it's anything from like, um, let's see here. It's things like laser lines. Of course, this is an image that's gonna be ripe with this stuff because you're just, Modeling. It looks like it's just a modeling exercise, right? And design exercise. So these are laser lines. These are straight lines. Got to watch out for those. Uh, watch out for low poly shapes. Um, hard, hard straight edges like this one's kind of like a laser line. And all you need to do is add like a little bit of geometry to kind of bend it a little bit, or even just adding a bevel to try and get the light to wrap around the edge of those uh, in a smoother fashion. The other thing to watch out for are things like um, like thick bevels that have hard edges. Um, to get the the look and feel of like a a building that's got something inside of it is the difference between um, modeling a window and then modeling a window but insetting all of the information right. So like having the frame here, but then taking this whole inner area and pushing it back further that that'll go a long way so you push that information a little bit further then the then the window is no longer flush with the wall and then there's all of a sudden a, a lot more depth going on same with this one it's like the frame depth on the outside kind of makes me feel like it's just placed on the on a box if that makes sense so you gotta watch out for those um, watch out for if you can, I don't know if cars can, I don't think cars can go over the top of this, but this is really thin. So watching out for stuff like that is, is gonna be really important for maintaining that kind of quality. Um, yeah, when you get into the objects that are further into the distance, it might be better even to go even more flush so that you're not getting uh, attention drawn to it unless you want the attention drawn to it. But you can see how far these are sticking out. It looks like it's just placed on the outside of a box. Um, I wonder if I can... Let me see if it's... Oh, come on. There we go. So like these windows, for example, are pretty inset, or these ones, just seeing them go in further, or like if the frame is gonna stick out pretty far, adding just something else that helps like reconnect or ground it is gonna be really important. Um, but yeah, insetting your windows, it does wonders for like explaining the thickness of the wall or 
just making the building feel a little bit thicker, which is funny because you can tell these windows haven't really got the treatment yet. Those just don't have the depth that they need. You can see the, the difference in like how these feel to each other. Yeah. Um, there we go. But uh, yeah. Mika, what's up? How you doing? Let's, uh, let's continue on with the rest of the portfolio though. So this one's pretty cool. Uh, when, when it comes to the quality of something like this, it's, it's really about going outside of, again, you know, I was talking about the shapes and making sure it doesn't look like it's geometry. So there's some shapes here that I, when I can look at it and I can see the wireframe with my mind, then, then I think it's like, it's kind of the illusion is broken. And the next up is making sure that your materials are, um, are spot on. Like, I don't know what this material type is. Um, I know that this is a missive, but it, yeah, I, or oh, these are rings too. That's interesting. So it's, it's understanding the surfaces that you're representing and then building on those to try and like hide the, the fact that it is geometry. I guess if it's ancient or it's really old, um, I guess I, I'd want to know why it's either, why it's black, like maybe it's a type of metal or it's a, it's like a type of stone. So th there's a lot of like, nice blender, awesome. There's a lot of explaining to do when it comes to surface information. <laughs> Wireframe in the mind, I think you might be seeing the matrix. You know what I'm talking about, man. You know exactly what I'm saying. The polygon whisperer. <laughs> Um, this, this was pretty cool modeled in nine hours. So Maya, Maya and Arnold. So these shapes are pretty cool. There's definitely some like some Boolean action going on here. Um, oh, nice. You got a. You got a message from Tim Simpson. Dude, this guy's awesome. Uh, he has got a great YouTube channel, by the way. If you if you don't know of him, Tim Simpson. So this one's pretty cool. It looks like some fun modeling exercises. Some cool shapes were created. Um, displaying it, I guess, is fine. The way that it, it's set up. Compositionally, it's, it's kind of conflicting as far as like I think if maybe if there was some atmosphere to get some separation between the pieces, then you could kind of separate where things are at and like, like does is this the edge and then it goes back, right? Like you could do this maybe. Wonder if I can. Yes. And I'll just do a, a quick cut so you can see what I'm talking about. I can see how much that separates out the scene, right? Because then you could you could go one more. And like, it's just, stuff's just getting further and further back, right? Whoop. No, I was doing it wrong all along. <laughs> oh yeah, thanks uh, Hobbit. You can link that in chat also, by the way. But like, you see what I'm talking about where it's like, it's about separating out the, just to understand where things are at. Like, I think it even goes a little bit further back, back here. That's right, I'm doing it. I Yeah, you guys know what I'm saying. I'm like, Ah, uh, I gotta keep going. 
but yeah, getting that that depth is going to be really good for displaying this stuff. And even if there was maybe just a little bit of roughness variation, like if there were some pieces that were more reflective than other pieces, this would look a whole lot better presentation wise. Um, let's uh, let's keep going though. So this one's pretty cool. The uh, when I see this, I'm curious like how things form, right? So like these are. I guess these are larger rock formations. So like having more of these larger rocks probably closer to the edge to kind of give you this this valley feel. You're from Brazil, hey man, how's it going? Nice to meet you, welcome. Uh, G Parent and Agent Putt, thank you for the follow. Uh, so thinking about compositionally more of like a, a valley in that sense, and then grass height variation. It looks like there's a little bit going on. Uh, you could to increase the quality. Um, yeah, that's a good song, Circles. To increase the quality, you could use a macro uh, color to break up the, the color of the grass so that there's variation. Like maybe some areas of grass are more green than others. Um, and then thinking about the scale of the grass in some some of the areas. Wait, I feel like it should be clear in the description what models you made. Maybe who made it, others. Oh, interesting. Uh, I did the lighting, the overall layout of the map, level design. So layout of the map, I guess, are you doing the propping as well? Mostly trees, grass, and background stuff, okay. Yeah, so thinking about like, if you were if you did the level design, it's thinking about compositionally how to position stuff um, so that it's it's all kind of leading you in a direction. This actually feels like I'm heading towards a dead end. And in most games, if I was heading this way, I'd probably turn around unless I feel like there's something over there that I might be able to loot. This one is a little bit clearer that there's a path going that way, but I don't see any paths. Maybe it's just because the camera's really low. But if you're, if you're doing the level design and whatnot, I would probably expect to see this image from a higher angle so that you can actually see the layout of the, uh, of the, the map that you built, right? So we can understand the, the actual design that you had put together. Um, and feel free to link other artists if you know their portfolio as an art station. You can just add their URL and it'll make like a quick link, which is really nice. The lighting should, uh, so Metherian says, the lighting should also try to convey where I should be looking. Yeah, picking focal points and, and, and whatnot. Right now it's like, it's like that one's glaring in your eye. There's not really anywhere to focus on other than maybe these two rocks here. Um, this one's telling me to focus on the grass. So it is, it's really about that, that composition as well. That's where that's where you get the quality that you're you're talking about. Like in this shot, I would probably move this fern over here, and then like remove some of the grass and build a path so it feels like I'm heading towards somewhere. Yeah, and instead of the one-off ferns, maybe you have them under trees and stuff, and they kind of cluster more together, like uh, Best Hobbit is saying. Um, definitely. Uh, okay, let's keep going here. So this one, this one looks like it's not. Um, this this one just doesn't look complete, right? So I, I don't understand where your, what the direction is. There, this is definitely the focal point. Virus diagrams. For placement is a tip that you saw. Oh, interesting. For uh, plant clustering and, and stuff like that. Oh, it, it was in Karen's. Oh, that's, that's yeah. No, she's spot on. She's really good, man. Um, we had Chinese today. It was amazing. It's delicious. So, this, uh, 
if this is the focal point, it's just too dark, right? The the light is over here shining towards you when it should be behind you shining towards the asset. That helps immensely with the darkness problem. Um, yeah, hmm. This, so in this area, this hard edge feels odd. The ground doesn't feel cold. Like this is snow, right? So you got some snow peak mountains over here. Um, yeah, it's just really, it's really empty right now. Oh, Hobbit, Matthew just left us, if you can believe that. How dare he? How dare he? Um, but yeah, this just doesn't feel, it doesn't feel complete. I'd actually probably remove uh, this scene from your portfolio because it'll just bring the quality all the way up for the rest of the portfolio. These, this prop as well, like there's this weird edge here. So it looks like there's maybe some normal information that's conflicting with, uh, yeah, that's hmm. definitely beveling these edges to get rid of that hard edge and then um, either weighting your normals. Like what's happening here is kind of like, a, let me see if I can, I'm trying to think if I can simulate it. So it's kind of like this, right? So basically what's happening is the normal information is is wrapping around this. So you're getting all of this normal information is kind of bleeding over. And by auto smoothing it, I was actually able to cause a hard edge here, which breaks the normal, which essentially allows for this to point this way and this one to point this way, the normals for those, right? And um, yeah, it's, I feel like you're getting some normal errors where the the normal on the inside here that you're not seeing is bleeding over the edge. You may have to mark hard edges. Is this yeah, this is blender. I would argue, so Metherian says he, he would argue spend as much time on texturing and details as he does on making the geometry. No need for 2.8. It's in vanilla. What's in vanilla? Oh, yeah, weighted normals. Yeah, weighted normals is in here now. So, can I just bevel this, right? So, what, what you're seeing is like if you smooth this, so you're getting this like weird lighting error from the average normals. And uh, where are we at here? If you go to modifiers, you can do weighted normals. Uh, you gotta make sure that auto smooth is turned on here. And then we'll just turn that up so that those edges are hard, uh, soft. So you can see this is without weighted, weighted normals. And then with weighted normals, it cleans up the that smoothing issue for you, which is really good because then you can actually like pay for cheap bevels, and then you get a nice like lighting curve around the edge there. Um, and that would that would probably fix things like this. I'm guessing if you added a weighted normals modifier to it, you probably would fix that. Um, but yeah, this is so right now. This is really low poly. It looks like there might be a bevel there. Um, Definitely commit the time to the shapes and details to try and get away from the look of it being 3D. So like for this top piece here, right? Um, that top piece could literally be like this, right? And obviously I shouldn't have beveled that <laughs> until I, until I, oh man, hang on. This is gonna bug me now.
But like those details that we're looking at just a second ago, you could you could grab this edge here and bevel this. Let's auto smooth that. And then take these uh, take these outside faces here, and even I guess even this one here. And if you bevel these ones separately with a single bevel, you get a much more um, visually interesting shape than just like a square. So let me pull these back a little bit so you get the the shape we're looking for. And then I think you could even. Um, come on, brain. There we go. You could take this top piece here and bring that back. Obviously, that's rounded over there, but uh, yeah, being able to do that, you get a nice little edge in there. You get some more interesting shapes here. You get the nice light wrapping around the edge there. Um, there we go. That. That'll really help in like trying to break away from the, the low poly look. And like this, this stuff down here, I don't even know if you need this. Maybe you could put your name like in the background. Um, oh yeah, there are bevels in there. So those bevels are just really small. Like this bevel here is, is decent. Um, but if you're gonna pay for those bevels, you should definitely make them wider, especially when you're in a, in, in a game, right? Uh, making a wider bevel just looks more uh, pleasant to the eye, especially as you get further away from an object. So those do get exaggerated quite a bit. Uh, and then this this scene actually, I will be I will be super super honest. I think this is actually the weakest thing in here. I don't know if it's uh, so. This is four months ago. So it's understanding like where. Um, how things are put together, like seeing how the, the bricks end here, looking at reference for how windows are set up with bricks, you probably could cut the geometry in a way where the bricks kind of align better. And then that'll allow you to, to solve the window shape, right? And then bringing that inward, the space between the window and the door is really narrow. The door could probably go in further to be a little bit more interesting against the wall. Um, the trash can, looks like a, a simple shape, right? Like you can see how it was built. Whereas like a trash can, um, if you if you took the time and built the, built like the normal map information for it and uh, actually built the trash that spills out around it, that, that goes much further. Um, this is basically a, a box, right? Let me see, there was a, was there a wire in here? Yeah, so this is basically a box. So if there's anything you can do to a shape to get it away from those simple 3D shapes, that's when it becomes really beneficial. Like like what you did with the pipes down here. Like if you exaggerate these pieces just a little bit more, make them a little bit thicker, it changes that silhouette just far enough that now it's not just a, a tube spline thing, right? It's actually got some functions, some features to it, some silhouette breakers that get away from the tube shape and it explains like how it's connected to the wall. Um, and then the other thing I would uh, comment on is the, the material work. The better materials that are in here are like this metal with the, for the, uh, the guard, guard rail type thing. Um, but understanding why these are here is really important. Like I don't, I don't know why these are here. Is it to protect the building? Is it to park bicycles? That stuff is like, yeah. But your, all of your materials in general, minus that one, are really like conflicting. They're really, um, they're lacking the fidelity that you're expecting, that like the cracks in the brick here, are just kind of how they're all overall a bit wavy. I think you could learn quite a bit from even buying one tutorial from like Josh Lynch, for example. Really would open your eyes up to the way materials work. Um, but I th yeah, I think it's a combination of like the, the quality and skill level of your modeling currently, and then just going further with it. Like the, the pipes and stuff is, is pretty good, but like going further with that and then understanding 
PBR materials, physically based uh, materials, and how they uh, how they render, and why like why this shape feels feels weird, right? Like if you can answer why that feels weird, and are able to to build off of that, you'll you'll definitely figure figure out the stuff. Yeah, and modeling time five point four hours. So I don't think you need to list these at all. Like I don't. I don't care too much about how long it took you to model something. All I care about is if it looks good or not, right? If it looks like something that's like, wow, oh, wow, that looks really good. And then you're like, yeah, it took me 30 days, but it was, you know, it was really, or it took me like eight years. You're like, what? What the heck? And then you turn the camera and it's an entire world and it's spherical, it's a whole planet. Then I'd be like, oh, okay, all right. I feel inadequate. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully that uh, gives you some insight. Definitely continue to hang out in the Discord and let's just keep uh, let's keep working at it. Remember, watch out for laser lines, um, pay attention to materials, look at reference, and don't be afraid to post work in the critiques channel for people to feedback on. Because man, our, our community is crazy good at feedback. It's like, just insane weekend what's up man hi I just I just found here would you be would you review my blends on my my Instagram uh, you have to the temple will take hey you get out of here D Chan <laughs> join the challenges yes the challenges are actually really good they test your ability to model and uh, yeah and then there's substance challenges as well and you see how people tackle things and you can ask how they did something Mark, dude, what's up, man? How you doing? So weekend, I uh, there is a I'll let I'll let the moderators answer it, so I can keep keep going on the on the stuff I'm I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so look at complexity of your if you're modeling as well. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, hopefully that was uh, insightful. Birdcorp, what's up, man? I'll be right back. Then we're gonna get to the Discord critiques, okay? It's be like, I don't know, a few minutes. All right, peace. Be right back, be right back, I swear. <laughs> 